Hi everybody, my name is Regina Bohm and I live in West Haven, Connecticut and I am filming my new show for YouTube and it's called A Time to Sew with Regina. We're at Make Haven, which is a maker space in New Haven, Connecticut on 770 Chapel Street and we're, I'm actually promoting Make Haven along with myself so we're going to give us give you a little tour of Make Haven because if you live in the New Haven area you need to join and you need to tell them that Regina told you all about it okay right now we're in the sewing area and I cleaned it up a little bit so it would look nice for the show no I'm only kidding it's it's a nice area we have lots of regular sewing machines we have an embroidery machine we have an old singer over there that works on heavy stuff we have a fabricator that is a leather walking foot machine. Um, we have a blind hammer, but that's in the shop. We have a beautiful $15,000, I'm not sure about the quote on that, embroiderer machine. And it also embroiders hats because I bought the attachment for it. And we also have a serger. We have an ironing board and we have an ironing table when you're doing a gown or curtains or bigger stuff that you need space to press. This is our cutting table and all our supplies are at the end of this table. We have needles, we have thread, we have yarn, we have measuring tapes, we have all kinds of scissors. So everything you need, if you don't have it at home, you can make this your little sewing home because um, all you need to do is get trained on any of these machines by a facilitator, which is me. Um, there's uh, many of us that have different hours and they do different things like this girl here, Lilla, she does rug tufting which is making the rugs with the machine. I do textiles and sewing. This is Christian, she does sewing and textiles like I do. This girl, Christina, she does textiles and embroidery and uh, Young is sitting over there, matter of fact, she does textiles and sewing and large format printing. She does another department, which we'll, we'll uh, take a walk. And this girl, Denise, she does textiles, quilting, and knitting. Oh, because I forgot to tell you, we have a quilting machine. Uh, this is a, a sweater machine. This is a knitting machine. So that's another department. And we have the quilter. You know, the free arm quilting machine, which I haven't been trained on. Um, I'm not much of a quilter. I like it, but it's for my retirement, and I don't think I'll ever retire from what I'm doing. I do dressmaking and alterations in West Haven. I have a little shop that I just opened a month ago. In February, it'll be 45 years that I've been in business. So I know what I'm talking about, and I know what you need to know. And what I teach on these shows is basic, basic sewing. You know, so you can really just mend something or hem something, something that you would normally have to pay a tailor or seamstress to do it for you. So you'll be able to do it on your own because a lot of people have sewing machines in their home, but they're not sure how to work them. So we'll go through all that during the shows. But right now we'll take a moment and take a tour of Make Haven. So um, let's see, where should we start? We'll go over here to the carpentry department. So as you can see, it's a pretty big space. And when you go into these rooms, you have to wear these glasses. Um, my filmer has a pair of glasses on, so she's good to go. It's pretty loud in here, but as you can see, now we get a badge to come into the place, and then you get trained by a facilitator, and then this badge will turn that machine on. If you're not trained, that machine won't come on. So that's it. Okay, so we're back in the uh, big room again. This is the pottery area, and you know what that is. It's sitting at a wheel making pottery. It's not the ceramic studio. Just lounging areas or computer areas. These are our laser printers, and of course they cut wood, fabric, leather, um, plastic, ceramic. Um, laser cutting is pretty neat. Um, it's another thing I don't have time for. I'm, I'm always sewing. 
This is a large format printer. This makes big banners. Uh, computers for everybody's use at any time. This is electronics. So if you have to fix something at home, wiring and all that stuff, I don't know anything about it. And again, that's a sewing department in the middle. Uh, this is radio and communication. And these are our 3D printers. Everybody loves these things. It actually takes hours and hours and hours for this to build it with this rod of plastic. Real, real of plastic. So it, it's forming some little house or something. I don't know, it's a replica of something, I don't know. Okay, this is our metal shop. You need glasses again. And they do weld, welding and metal cutting here. We have a $70,000 water jet cutter that cuts metal underwater. That was donated. $70,000. I don't have that kind of money. And, and who has room in their home or their garage for this equipment? Everything, it, it's open 24 seven and the membership is only $50 a month. And, and also if you're a student or low income or retired, $10 a month. How can you go wrong? And this is the um, printmaking department. This is for silk screening for t-shirts. We also do tie dyeing, we do jewelry, we do polymer clay. Um, we have a bio lab. It used to be a green room and that's why the walls are green, but this is the bio lab. Um, and this is beer making. And actually the beer making guy is here. You wanna say a few words about it? Come on. My name's Liam. I'm the, Hi, Liam. I'm the, I'm the brewing facilitator. But yeah, we, we, make, we make beer and we, we, it, the beer's on tap here for, for members that want to have a little taste after they do their, their work, hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. We also do coffee roasting. There's a guy that does the whole coffee thing. I don't drink coffee. This is our kitchen. It's a full service kitchen. We have a dehydrator. We have a bread maker. We have a popcorn machine. We even have a pizza um, wood stove. What do you call it? Pizza oven. That's outside. All the dishes and everything. You can come here and cook your dinner, you know, or um, have a. <clears throat> we have a lot of classes here too, and there's cooks that come in and um, teach a class on how to make pasta or ice cream or whatever. Okay. Um, we're almost done with the tour. These are bathrooms. And these rooms here are, uh, we have a media room now, it's new. And we also have startup desks. And it's only like $200 a month to um, get like a cubbyhole office, you know. And this is our storage area. Because if you're making a, a, a wood cabinet or something, you can't take all this stuff home, you know. So um, I have a shelf over here and it's this size and it's twenty dollars a month for storage but i only pay ten because i'm a facilitator we also have a lending library all these tools are lending lent to you for free with a credit card of course because if you don't return it you're going to get charged for it so that's a good thing to have just because you're a member you get to take a drill home with the battery charger and everything you know and then back here Excuse me. We have a big area of free stuff that people don't want or didn't use, and you, you're welcome to it. You know, we have a lot of areas like that where there's, even in the um, sewing area, there's a whole bunch of fabric that is utilized by everybody. Because we get donations from people all the time. And in fact, I have a woman that is donating two big boxes of leather. I can't wait. I hope it's enough to make myself a pair of leather pants. Oh, by the way, I did make my outfit. Um, it's a jumper. It's corduroy, paisley. And I kind of like it. It's cute. Hi, oh, Bob. Hello. So that's it for the tour. Um, all you have to go to is makehaven.org and you can get a virtual tour. And you can also get the phone number to call here and be a member. But mention Regina that you started on my show.
Okay, so we'll get to the show right now. So before I start, I want to show you this. I saw this on the internet. And it's eight bags. And you have to cut out the bags in a shape. Okay, so that's all I did. And I used this as a guide to cut out more. And then you glue the eight bags together. And voila. What a beautiful Christmas decoration. Um, they call them snowflakes, but to me it almost looks like a poinsettia, a flower, too. So I just think it's such an easy thing to do. Now I'm going to use invisible tape to tape these last two together, because if I glue it, it's permanent, and I want to be able to store it, and it won't get crushed. So just a great idea. I'm, I've been cutting out tonight to make decorations for my shop. And I was actually at the laundromat cutting out one of these, and the guy wanted to buy one. So I'm making him a red one, and he paid me $10. I didn't ask for $10, he just offered it to me. So that's pretty nice. So um, this is the cutting area. And before I do anything, um, I should tell you that I opened my business Regina's Originals in 1979, and I've been doing it for 45 years now. And um, I do all types of alterations, and I went to college for fashion design, and I do um, dressmaking also. Um, so, and I teach, I used to teach adult ed, so um, I know a lot about sewing and a lot of tricks. So the first thing I'm going to show you to do, because anybody who watches a sewing show, you should know how to sew on a button. You know, maybe something so simple, but you don't know how to do it. And of course, I have an easier method to do it. Okay? So this is my sewing um, button box, I call it, my little sewing box. And there's certain um, needles that you need for certain items. Now you can use a regular needle, you're gonna need thimbles to protect yourself, to push it through the leather. This is a little piece of Velcro that picks up seed beads and then you just go like this to do beading. So there's all different, um, these needles here are leather needles. I stick them in a piece of leather so that I know. And if you can see, you might have to get a little closer, Emma. Um, it is a wedged edge, so it, it doesn't pierce. The, it's, leather isn't actually a skin, so it opens it up, and then when you take it out, um, you're not going to damage it. It will go back to normal, you know? That's a pretty big needle for this soft leather, but that's a leather needle. So you need that to work on leather. And this thing is called a thread braid. And if you don't want to go out and buy um, spools and spools of thread, all you need to do um, for our little project is to, I need to put my glasses on. Oh, and by the way, I know this goes with my outfit, but I'm going to show you later what it does. It's actually a sewing tool. So we're going to pull two pieces of thread out of here. And I'm going to use this uh, navy blue. I'm going to take two pieces, and I'll show you why in a second. And all you do is pull it out, and there you have just about enough for one button. So I'm going to get a needle, and, you know, everybody thinks, well, I can't see to thread the needle, so let me use a big hole, a big head. Now, that's okay if your fabric is thick enough to handle this big hole, but if your fabric is like a silk or a satin or something, you can't use such a big needle. So, if you have trouble getting a needle in, there are threaders, and that's what this little item is. This is called a threader, and you actually stick the wire into the hole of the needle, so if it's much smaller, and then you stick the thread, come on, 
the two pieces, I want two pieces, into the big hole. I don't do this too much. I usually just thread the needle, but I'm going to do it for the show. You fold it in half, and then you pull the wire, and you are threaded. How easy is that? Now, the reason I put two threads into the needle is because now when I fold it in half, I have four threads, and my button is going to go on a lot quicker. It's a sewing trick. Okay, so I made my knot and I'm going to get a button and sew it on this piece of fabric for you. And of course I, now you'd have to look at your shirt to see how the other buttons are sewed on the shirt. They might do an X shape or they might do one, two, one, two. But watch how simple this is. We're going to go through the back and of course you would put it where it needs to be long. And now when I put my needle down next to it, I wanna flip it over and make sure that I'm not too far away from that knot because you could be way over there and you don't wanna be that far away, okay? So you always have to flip it over. A lot of people don't do that, okay? So there's one stitch. Then we go right next to the knot, not through the knot because you'll break the knot. So right next to the knot, go up, and then one more time, and this is much stronger. Now we're going to cross over to the other two holes, and four stitches and we're done. One, two, three, four, that's it. Now I went down, I wanna look and make sure that I'm not way far away, and I'm pretty, pretty right on, so I'm good. And now I go to the hole where we went before, okay? And I am done. Much stronger, and I only did four stitches, okay? Now, in the back, we need to pull all these stitches together. So you go through the center, make sure you don't um, touch that knot, that first knot. So that'll pull this together. And then we need to go through the loop to make a knot. And we have to do this twice to pull this all together, all right? And I, use, I usually pick up a piece of the fabric also. And that is it. You sewed on a button. We go through the loop, and we are good to go. You always cut your thread at an eighth or a sixteenth away, and, um, these are my paper scissors, so they're not doing very well. These are my fabric scissors. Always have a different set. These are for paper. I was cutting the paper bags out of that, so I don't want to use that for sewing. So now it's on, okay? So, like I said, you need different needles for different tools. So you need um, leather needles. Um, if you're, oh, this is a elevator, and what it does is elevates the button so that if it's a coat or something and it's very thick, you need to have your button away from the fabric. And then of course you would do a shank and um, wrap that so it's farther away. If I put the button way down on the fabric and the coat is really thick, you know, the edge of your button over is really thick, it's just gonna pop right off. So you need to have that shank. Now there are some buttons that already have a shank and you don't need to make one. You don't need to wrap it because a lot of people wrap and stuff. Oh, but this item, this is called Thread Heaven. And let me tell you, it is heaven. Now I bought this probably 25 to 30 years ago and I haven't even used the whole thing yet. And what you do is guide your thread right on the wax, okay? There used to be beeswax, and it actually conditions it so it doesn't tangle. This is great for any hand sewing that you're doing because you don't want your thread to get all tangled, get a knot in it, it happens all the time. So you just condition the thread with this wax. 
And like I said, I've had this for like 30 years and I hardly used any of it. Um, not very good looking, but I guess I could shave it and get some of this old stuff off, you know, but it's, it's nothing. It, it's nice and conditioned now. So it won't um, get all tangled on you. What else do I have in this box? Oh, this, this is good. Do you know those um, plastic grippers that they use to open jars? Well, they have them for needles because when you're pulling the needle through something very thick, you need something to grab your needle, okay? So this is a grabber. It's a good thing to have, okay? All right, so um, I guess I'm going to include my email in the show and that is Regina time to sew at yahoo.com so if you have any questions you're welcome to contact me in that way um, you can also contact Makehaven and contact me through through that channel also and that's makehaven.org okay 